Hey there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. And uh, first I want to give a little shout out to uh, Free to Kill and Success, because uh, without them I wouldn't have League Buffs, and without League Buffs uh, this video wouldn't be possible. So this is the uh, in-depth updated Electric DPS and Healer Guide, uh, continuing on through my Healer series. Uh, so as per usual, in the comment section you're going to find a pinned comment, and that pinned comment is going to have timestamps to each section of the video, because I know these in-depth guide videos are longer. Uh, so you're going to have uh, a link directly to the Might Single Target, Mic Range, Precision, Healer Spec, you know, DPS Spec, whichever section of Electric you're looking for, you're going to find it in that pinned comment. So you can skip right to that timestamp and watch the section that pertains to you. Uh, I will also have my previous guide linked in the comment section as well, uh, as it touches a little bit more in depth on some of the aspects. Because this in this video, it's not going to have any uh, footage. It's going to have all the updated and pertinent rotations for might and precision and for healing in terms of uh, updated artifacts, updated uh, rotations, and uh, just giving you uh, briefly what you guys need to know about the changes to electric. Thank you, and hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so in terms of a spec for Electric Might, it's going to be uh, very similar to what you'd expect from a, a DPS spec regardless for Might. Super powered, critical attack chance, critical attack damage, max your Might and power. You don't have to put 5% uh, percent prec here. I just did that so uh, I'd get the, the first tier unlock for the weapon taps, I just because I have extra skill points to do that with, so that's absolutely not necessary. You just want to dump the rest of your skill points in health. Once again, not necessary. If you're in the Tetra, that's great. Other than that, it's just for survivability purposes. Iconic powers, uh, you don't need this for the uh, range AoE for electric. I just did this just in case I need like a hybrid spec for a uh, uh, for single target. But once again, because I've got extra skill points, this is not necessary for either. For super speed, you want to take um, down to Whirling Dervish. This is if you're going to be using a melee rotation um, for super speed. It's not going to work if you're acrobat or flight or skimming. Uh, but if you are super speed and want to do an, a typical melee rotation with electric, then you take Dervish. But this is a, a generic guide. Uh, for two-handed, as my weapon choice, I just took it to have fun with Doomspin, just messing around. Obviously, it's not going to do that damage as, as without a prex spec, but uh, just to kind of have fun with it. Weapon choice is absolutely your choice. Uh, I would usually take like one-handed or shield or something just to, as a faster lunge so I can get closer to the set of ads and set up my dots. In terms of a gear spec, you're always going to be Blast Adapter. Head mod's always going to be Supercharged Circuit Breaker 3. Next mod's going to be Escalating Might. Back mod, I have Accelerate Biocat because I use the OP back for both uh, DPS and healing. There's not really any back mods that are going to be beneficial for Electric. Accelerate Arc Lightning is not necessary. It comes off cooldown when you need it to use it in the rotation. Same thing with Tesla Ball. It, would, it helps, but it's not necessary. Uh, Accelerate Flux, you're not using that as a DPS. Berserker, you're not going to be your damage isn't going to dip far enough for that because you're not going to be in melee range. The breakout ones aren't necessary. Same thing. So, you, if you don't heal at all, then yes, you can take one of the Accelerate DPS ones. It's not necessary. It's not going to improve your rotation at all. Uh, just in case you get, I guess you get interrupted or use the wrong power, the cooldowns will reset a little bit faster. But that's about it. But it's not necessary for the DPS spec to take one like that. In terms of the chest, is going to be penetrating strikes. I just believe this works better than core strength in terms of consistency because core strength and penetrating strikes have been kind of iffy back and forth. But uh, since I'm running Soul Cloak as a DPS trinket, or sorry, as an artifact, I don't need to take uh, Extended Supercharge. If you're not running Soul Cloak, then you can take Extended Supercharge. But without with both, it doesn't matter. They overwrite. Leg mod, absolutely nothing for electric. Don't worry about it. Hand mod is going to be max damage. Uh, foot mod, if you are super speed and you're going to be using uh, Whirling Dervish in the melee rotation, you need to take uh, dashing combos so you can cancel Whirling Dervish for a might build. But for myself, I just play electric as range, just the, the uh, normal loadout and rotation. I don't really mess around with melee. It's not necessary. So I take Tumbling Master. In terms of a trinket rotation, uh, Shadow Bat, Dark Construct Bat, you know, Snake Turret, um, uh, Shadow Snake Turret, whichever your preference is. I have the DPS trinket so I can clip it in with uh, Circuit Breaker. And then you just have Orbital and Supply Drop. In terms of artifacts for Electric Might, uh, because of the use of Circuit Breaker, which is the main supercharge for Electric, being obviously a 15 second cooldown, 5,000 power cost, uh, the cooldown allows you to spam it quite frequently. 
So that's why I'm always going to, you always run Gemini for a build that's going to have strong supercharge usage. So say like uh, Rage's Berserk, Earth's and Tomb, Electric Circuit Breaker. If you have a power set with like a weaker um, supercharge, like say like gadgets, like you're not going to be spamming um, gas, you're not going to be spamming speed drain. Like you don't, it's not necessary for Gemini. There's other options available. But for Electric, always going to run Gemini. And then scrap the soul cloak. You're always going to use that for an extra uh, stronger supercharge, as well as at 200, you get the extended supercharge tactical mod attached to that. And it's nice because electric builds supercharge the fastest out of any might power set, just because of how Tesla ball works, which I'll show later here. So it goes hand in hand to use Gemini and soul cloak because you're using circuit breaker so often to supplement your damage because it's that damage buff and it's also clipping power. So since you're using that so often, you always use those in tandem. And then I have the transformation card. The transformation card is the new uh, metal part two artifact. This is increases your crits. So obviously with electric having so many dots, it has the opportunity to tick greatly on that. So that is what I believe is the three best uh, artifacts for electric specifically. Uh, single target, it does vary. So we'll kind of touch on that when I go on single target. But for might ranged AOE or any kind of AOE damage as electric, those are the three artifacts you want to run. So for electric, it's going to be the same cliched loadout uh, that you've always seen. These six powers have been used for electric for years now, most likely. Uh, it's always the same loadout, but the rotation is going to be different this time. Uh, as opposed to my previous video, I thought I had the right rotation, but I wasn't really thinking about it correctly enough because I wasn't electric long enough. I just kind of switched, you know, found something that was good for damage and kind of just made the guide. Um, and while the results were certainly there, the initial rotation, I had the wrong idea. So with the rotation, you want to have electrogenesis first. Uh, the reason why you have want to have electrogenesis first, uh, A, it doesn't need to require from the PI setup, but the other advantage is that this first two on the dot ticks don't actually split damage. So, you know, I'm a little special guest here from uh, Juvenile. So if you go here, if you look at the first two targets that this dot hits, it's going to tick for full value. So you see 1650 and 1710, all the rest of the dots you're seeing are hitting lower, but the first two targets that it hits are always going to be maximum value. So that's the advantage of running electrogenesis first, because say if a tank is running to the next set of ads, you use electrogenesis, that dot tick applies to electrogenesis. So when the tank pulls that ad that you hit early to the next set of the next group or the group pile of ads, that dot now splits and carries her over to everyone. So it becomes very handy, especially in hallway fights or anything with ads or for the electrogenesis on the boss fight and the tank pulls in the ads. Uh, whichever you're doing, the electrogenesis dot's going to spread without you having actually having to do anything. So after that, you're going to do arc lightning, that, because the uh, arc lightning not only sets up your PI, but it also uh, splits damage very well. They've nerfed it kind of over the years because it was too strong, but uh, then after that, it's Tesla Ball. Uh, Tesla Ball is your second ability that splits damage uh, a lot better than any other might ability. So the importance of this rotation is one, Right away, we have one of our strongest dots that doesn't require a PI and will spread between ads when the tank pulls. So that's priority number one. Priority number two is to have our PI set up and our not our best damage splitting power. And then priority number three is to have your second best damage splitting power used. So it's always, you, no matter what the set of ads or the situation, you're always going to use the three abilities first in the rotation. And then you're self-dimensioning with Voltaic and Electric Cube to basically round that off. So the difference with... Uh, I think it was on this one. No, it was on this tab. So the advantage to Tesla Ball is how it's, uh, the dots are set up in terms of they generate supercharge. So if I just use like weapon tap here, you see I got 10 supercharge from that weapon tap. So if I do electrocute, I have 49 supercharge from using electrocute. So you see this dot is ticking the entire time. All these uh, the dots ticking for you know 12 seconds. I have all this damage coming. But I only get one supercharge from it. So basically we'll tap uh, another 10 to reset it. So now I'm going to use Tesla Ball. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, was that 6 hits? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I got 6 hits of supercharge regen from that dot. Where any other ability I would just have 1. So if I, once again, if I reset it and then do electrogenesis... Same thing, Electrogenesis gave me one tick of supercharged regen for 60, 
but it's a 12 second dot. So I'm getting all this damage from this dot, but I'm only getting one supercharge regen. So because how Tesla Ball works and how it splits damage, I will get supercharge generation for each hit. And as you can see, this is why Electric generates so much supercharge, more than any other power set there is, uh, in terms of without using a supercharge generator. Because each time, you're going to get six hits of regen supercharge, way more than just hitting one other power, just by hitting Tesla Ball once. So that is the advantage of running Tesla Ball and always having it out. So that's one of those things where you don't want to leave it on cooldown, or sorry, you want to leave it always on cooldown, but you want to have it a priority in your rotation because of uh, how it splits damage. Back to blank there. And then it rounds out with uh, Electrocute. And Voltaic Bass is just basically your um, burst damage. So like I said, very common loadout. Everyone runs it. Every electric DPS you're going to see on videos or something is always going to have the same loadout, but this rotation is going to vary slightly from what they're doing because of those reasons. Because I'm setting up a dot that carries over uh, splits between adds, so even if a tank pulls the ad, I'm still getting max damage from that dot, and he's spreading the dot for me to the next set of adds. I've got Arc Lightning, which splits damage and sets to the PI, and i got Tesla Ball, which is my supercharge generator, basically, and then uh, benefits from that electric damage. So that's why always these first three priority powers, and then basically just evening out with Electric Voltaic Blast and Electric Cube. So I'm not using a melee rotation per se, um, because Electric DPS is the safest DPS power set there is. And what I mean by safest is that it does its damage from full range, everything's max range. You know, I, I can sit here, max distance, and not have to worry about uh, any sort of damage. Like, I, I'm absolutely no risk, everything's at max range, and I'm not worrying about anything. And this applies for the same in Elite, in regular, in any type of content, I can be max range and still do this type of damage. Yes, the damage, it's electric is meant for eight targets or, or large groups. It's not meant for like three targets. So your damage on three targets is going to be less. But just think in a raid, how many times you're actually facing three targets. If there's only three adds in the hallway, the tank's going to pull the next set of adds and you all of a sudden you got a big group. Like just think how it is when you do like a Phoenix Cannon, either regular or Phoenix Cannon Elite. When you're doing the hallway, there's like eight to 12, 15, 20 adds all in that hallway. And that's where electric gets its most damage from. So even, even when you look at like Phoenix Ken, uh, the first boss of Black, uh, Lady Blackhawk, um, if you're solo tanking that, you have the boss, you have the three sets of adds, you have the Thresher, uh, sorry, not the, th yeah, Thresher in the beginning, you have the Suppressor, you have the other ad waves. Even in that fight, there's going to be more than three targets. So if you want to maximize your damage on three targets, this is where you'd switch and use Dervish. Um, if you're super speed, you know, you can mess around with Dervish and, and get some good numbers doing melee, but it, it's not necessary. The, the point of electric is to be max range damage, being completely safe. You get healing from Mark Lightning. Um, so it's it's just the safest damage you can be. So that's why if you're looking for a power that does like super well in elite, super well in ads, that doesn't risk you at all, you can just stand in the back and DPS the entire time. That's what electric uh, benefits and that's where electric uh, excels. So let's kind of get into the rotation and show you what the numbers actually look like here.
Okay, so you get the idea there, obviously with the three targets versus um, everything else. So in the three targets, you're at mid 40s, which is not good for this level of might, but at the same time, like I said, there's not too many cases where we actually have three targets in content. Most likely it's always more, a dog pile of ads. Uh, with all the amount of ads they put in hallways now. And that's where lecture starts to sign. So 66, 72, 66, 74, 65, 66, 66, 69. So just depends on the hit counter right there. So obviously the more hits you have on the parsers from the dot ticks, the better the parse. So 254 versus like 239, that's the difference between like a 72 and 65K parse. Just how the parsers line up in terms of the 10 seconds, uh, having more dot ticks on one parse. But uh, that's that's where the rotation is. So as you can see with this type of rotation, uh, I'm hitting the powers essentially off cooldown. There might be like one second or less uh, when they're available off cooldown, and that's why this rotation flows together. There's no interruption at all. And then yeah, I have the non-splitting damage from Electrogenesis at the start. I have the non-splitting damage or the better splitting damage from Arc Lightning, and then I have this better splitting damage from Tesla Ball as my first three moves. So I'm always setting up those moves in order, and then basically supplementing with the dot of Electrocute and the burst of Voltaic Blast in between everything else. So that's what it is in terms of how Circuit Breakers worked in the rotation. It essentially just works into a clip. So so if I go into, uh, we're gonna do one rotation just to set it up. And then once all my dots are ticking, you know, we can go into Circuit Breaker. Yeah, and there you have it, just one Circuit Breaker on uh, eight ads you know, a million damage. And that's just one circuit breaker on buff. You know, I'm not on nitro, I'm not in content using the augment buffs, you know, nothing like that. So, you know, and that's, you know, a million damages from circuit breaker. And obviously you can see with my supercharge, that's just one circuit breaker right there because of the soul cloak mod. So I've got all these circuit breakers. If there's nature bug using, um, a bug form to give supercharge regen or any other healers giving the green circles, I can consistently spam, um, circuit breaker for this AOE rotation and consistently reach those, these types of results using that supercharge just to supplement my own damage. It's a clipping move. I'm doing anything else. I'm not wasting any time. I can go straight into it and have also the proc from Gemini as well. So just imagine that's the Gemini proc uh, and damage for myself. Now include, you know, six other players doing damage at the same time in the circles. And because electric, I can basically sit wherever I want to uh, incorporate them in my field. Because I'm, I'm either going to be, if they're all ranging as, as prec, I can be that too. If they're going to be melee, I can be melee and clip it. doesn't matter. There's, the, lim, the range on electric is limitless. So let's touch on the single target rotation. So in terms of electric single target, uh, the spec changes slightly. And by that, uh, the artifact changes. So in terms of my spec, I still running the exact same mod, circuit breaker, escalating might, you know, still running might augments. Yeah, my skill points back is the exact same in terms of maxing the DPS, putting in the health and power. Uh, the only thing that changes is in terms of the artifact spec. Uh, you need a heat vision for electric, which is no surprise. Most might DPS need heat vision for that. Uh, so you need to run heat vision for the amplified heat vision. I'm still running transformation because the, the dot crits on heat vision and everything else is, is greatly beneficial. This is the, pretty much the new go-to artifact for DPSing. Uh, and then my supplementary one is the strategist. Uh, that's one you didn't see as might range AOE uh, because I need to run the Gemini and the Soul Cloak. Uh, the strategist card, uh, it's interesting because it's um, basically on any crit, uh, it has a chance to add a damage over time. It's a little bit harder for the might side. Uh, the same thing, it does the same thing for precision, except the precision I can track it and show you exactly how much damage you're getting from the combat log analyzer. It doesn't show that for might, unfortunately, so it's, it's basically a, like a guesstimate. That's essentially what it is. Uh, I can't tell you exactly how much damage I'm getting for the strategist in a raid. Um, I can't show you those numbers, which is a shame. It's just how it's coded. But because the tr you're running the transformation card, you have all these extra crits. Uh, and then because of electric already having lots of dots, you have lots of opportunities on those dots to crit. And then you see the strategist card. So basically, uh, the strategist card, if I can kind of show roughly here. So if we do, um, just do heat vision, get some crits here. See it right there? No. Yep. Yeah. So you see that precision dot tick that's ticking right there? That is the strategist card. 
So those ticks are basically free damage ticks uh, each time a chance to have a dot. So he has one heat vision. Just using one heat vision proc that type of damage from the strategy card. Obviously, over the course of an entire rotation, like an electrocute, you're getting, or sorry, not electrocute, electric densers, you're getting a lot more. So that's why, that's where that's from. It's basically just to supplement uh, the damage. So the strategy is first the Grim, uh, the Grenorum. If I'm using ability, like electric, it's set to polarize, so there's no sense to run the Grim because I'm not getting any benefit from it. I would essentially be using the Grim as pet damage for a single target, but the pet damage is actually weaker in the long run with the strategy just because of all the dots that are ticking as electric and heat vision dots from burning, I have a chance to have much higher uh, damage over times. So that's why I'm running the Strategist Transformation and the Soul Amplifier. So in terms of a loadout, same thing. No surprise I'm using Electrogenesis because A, it doesn't require PI. It's a, it's a stronger hitting dot than both Touch the Ball and Electrocute. It doesn't matter on single target, so that's why it's, it's your hardest hitting dot, so you want to use that. Heat Vision is explanatory. Arc Lightning sets the PI for Tesla Blast. Tesla Blast uh, works in that ability, and the Robot Psychic is just for... Uh, cooldown sake because I'm only using those four abilities. So electric single target is incredibly weak. Uh, th there's no way around that. It's weak before, it's weak now. What basically supplements that is being able to use Circuit Breaker in succession. So we'll kind of, we'll show the rotation first and then I'll show it with Circuit Breaker with what I mean and then we can kind of touch on that. Yeah, so you see, even with the crits, electric like single targets, nothing to write home about. 29, 34, 26, it can dip down to 34, 28. So it, it's pretty much like high 20s to like mid 30s. Uh, it all basically depends on the, if the Tesla Blast crits uh, from Transformation Artifact. If that crits back to back, then you know you have a decent parse in the 30s. If you don't, then you don't. It's one of those things where you're making the best of, out of a bad situation. Electric single target has always been terrible. Um, even before going back to my old guide. Um, but what does kind of supplement it is being able to use circuit breakers. So this is where you'll see people like, oh, electric single target's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's good if you can keep up circuit breaker. So if I'm doing like circuit break here, so we'll just pop uh, if for the first example here. I don't have Gemini on, so you don't have to worry about that uh, proc damage. So if I just hit circuit breaker and then go into Tesla Blast Spam, you know, 51, 51, a lot of low 20s 46 20 so obviously that wasn't the best example but as you can see i'm getting 27k just from being able to spam that uh, and it didn't really do much like if i've got uh, consistent supercharge regen from someone else i can go back into it so you know if i'm using that circuit breaker as a buff in my rotation and then you know go into heat vision So there we go, a 54k single target parse, just with Circuit Breaker. And that Circuit Breaker is something that you can easily kind of keep up, depending what you have, and if you have like a nature bug healer or something in your group, being able to spam, that's something that you can keep up as a supercharge 
uh, consistently. So if you go in with like into a boss fight, you're full supercharged. You have access to the circuit breaker. You got supply drops, everything else. You got um, like a healer giving you supercharge. You can keep up with other power sets with circuit breaker. Uh, just being uh, how the damage buff works, being it being clipping moves, you're not wasting any damage. So it's it's very possible, and with the cooldown being 15 seconds, if you can uh, continually use that back to back. So it's one of those things where it has the ability to keep up with pretty much any power set. You just have to be able to use Circuit Breaker. So Circuit Breaker is like the you know make or break you as a single target tune. Like say you know for example you're doing Phoenix Can Elite Final Boss. You've got like a, a bug healer or, or healer giving Gemini circles, and you got other DPS around you, a Prec DPS or whatever. You got the advantage because Electrogenesis is going to hit multiple targets. Heat Vision is going to hit multiple targets. And you've got Arc Lightning, which is going to hit multiple targets. So even if there's two targets, you're doing more damage than that Prec DPS because they're just flurry shotting hitting one boss. Where you're hitting three targets, plus you have that Circuit Breaker in your back pocket to be able to consistently use every 15 seconds when they've got you know 30 second supercharges. They can only use a supercharge half, uh, half as many as you can. So it just depends on that situation. If you have the circuit breaker, you have the ability to do well with single target. If you don't, then you're doing subpar damage with, with single target. But you know, electric's not designed to be a single target might based power set. If, if you want to do the best of both worlds, you basically prec on single target and then you do uh, range AOE for might. You know, that's essentially how it works and how the story unfolds for electric. Okay, so this will be the precision side of the guide. So beginning, I'll be going through the specs for uh, your skill points, artifacts, gear, uh, everything else. And then we'll be touching on the melee rotation, the single target rotations, and then the range AOE rotations as well. So let's kind of get into that here. So in terms of the gear, you're always going to have blast adapter, depending on what you're going to be running. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a weapon choice, but uh, if the meta right now for melee is going to be two-handed, and the meta for single target is going to be dual wield, which is nothing new for probably most of the people watching this video. Uh, the head mod. Now, because we're running the transformation artifact, which I'll get to when I touch on the artifacts, you don't need critical wired. Uh, because you're going to have the crits from that artifact, so you might as well run uh, supercharged circuit breaker 3, uh, so you can consistently get that supercharge out. Neck mod is always going to be Relentless Precision. Back mod, um, you have some choices here, but I like Berserker because uh, being melee with two-handed, you're always going to be in the middle of a pack of adds. Uh, so if your health does dip, which it is going to, especially in some of the new raids with some uh, with the spike damage, that's uh, the splash damage, uh, you're going to drop below 35% for a moment. And when you do, you get that extra 10%. So it's, it's one of those ones where it's just like a min-max type situation where it's not always going to apply. You can just run like Accelerated Flux or uh, something else, but uh, it does help in those situations where you will dip. Chest mod's going to be Penetrating Strikes. A core strength right now, I can't confirm or deny that that works. I, I know Penetrating Strikes is usually always consistent, so that's why I run that. Leg mod, there is no leg mod for electric. And then obviously in the trinket setup, it's your preference once again, orbital, uh, supply drop, uh, some kind of DPS trinket, and then uh, the actual stat bonus. Hand mod's going to be always max damage. Feet mod's going to be tumbling master. Uh, you can also do dashing combos, depending if you're super speed, you're going to be using dervish in the melee rotation to cancel uh, for a little bit extra damage, then you'd want uh, dashing combos. You don't necessarily need dashing combos. Uh, you can also just weapon tap cancel. But once again, it's it's not uh, you know a game breaker. It's just your preference. So touching on the artifacts now. So with the recent update, Metal Part Two, it has brought about a new sort of a meta now for precision DPS. Uh, the transformation card, the Stratus card, and the Venomous Suspenser as a combination yield some very very uh, promising results. There are some other kind of fluctuations there. Like the sparring it hasn't really moved. Um, into there anymore. It's, it has, it's only really good in SM when you can consistently counter a boss for that precision increase, which you're not going to be getting in actual raid content because you've got the healers throwing block breakers, controllers throwing block breakers, tanks throwing block breakers. It's just not consistent. So sparring I was just really used just for the stats. There are going to be some power sets that still require the Gnorum uh, for the PI setup, and it's 5% it's prac at 200. And some nice setup damage there as well. Electricity is not one of them because the PI for electricity that is normally used is uh, Electrify, where Grim sets are polarized. 
and the fact that the strategist damage gives you uh, damage over time. So if I go back to the strategist here, so uh, upon achieving a critical hit on a target, there's a chance to apply tactical advantage. And then uh, basically if it's, it's a damage critical, it applies the damage over time. So it's basically adding another dot uh, to your already precision loadout. So you don't need the Grim, which is uh, going to apply some extra pet damage. But once again, the, the pet damage is going to be less than what the potential for the strategist card would be. The Gemma Horus, that can work. Uh, you can certainly work with electricity, especially if you're clipping in like um, a Tesla ball to get some extra uh, ticks of damage or arc lightning. Uh, using two-handed is easy enough to set up bleed and talon strike for the 13 plus hit. The only thing is Gemma Horus, uh, it's, it's a very niche artifact. Um, it doesn't work well with dual wield at all. Uh, dual wield single target for flurry shot. Uh, I still believe, and other people have tested as well, it's a bit of a damage loss uh, using the Gemma Horus, constantly interrupting the rotation, especially if you're not gadgets, because gadgets has the turret jump cancel with it, because uh, you still need to apply it every six seconds. The other thing as well, the Gemma Horus is absolutely useless uh, if you're using explosive shot, which most people do, because explosive shot still has uh, higher uh, damage than brawling a weapon mastery. And then at the same time, you're not buying three weapons. You're not using like brawling for range, do wheels for single target, and, and two handed for melee. That's a lot of marks uh, into those three different weapons. So it's right now, it has the advantage. Uh, it's just a, a niche artifact, really. Because the thing is, the Stratus card also works for healing. So you get more value out of leveling your Stratus card because it's going to help for your healing because it adds a heal over time on a critical. And then on your damage, it adds a damage critical. So it, it's just one of the things where the Gemma Horus, maybe once upon a time in a sale, when something comes out, you can level it. But right now, you get better value from the Stratus card. So that's why I always recommend it. Uh, the COG controllers can run, so you don't have to worry about running the COG anymore. Um, so Gemini, you know, it's not necessary as a prec DPS anymore. Um, as electric, might a DPS it will, but not necessarily as prec, because we have better options now. So basically what that boils down to is your artifact setup, ideally, is going to be the strategist card, the transformation card, and the venomous dispenser. That is going to be the new uh, go-to for precision DPS for the time being. Okay, for the skill point spec for electric uh, and precision in general, it's going to be weapons expert, 20 into critical chance, crit, uh, 40 into critical damage. Then you want to put your max in precision. In terms of iconic powers, you're just taking robot psychic. In terms of super speed, if you are super speed, then you would take uh, obviously the speed force. You take um, you don't need tornado pull. That's just for a single target. Uh, if you're doing a, like a hybrid build, but you don't need that. You just need something to get down. But face dodge and dervish if you're using that. In terms of weapons, being two-handed, you just need to max out for two-handed mastery because there's no weapon mastery involved with two-handed, and which gives you enough skill points to put um, 76 into might. In terms of the augments, obviously you're going to have precision origin augments, or adaptive augments, sorry. Uh, that's just going to be whatever is current for that DLC. And then the origin augments, obviously you're going to have precision as well, which is uh, currently at the time of filming this video the highest rank is 257 on those and these ones are all 23 but since this is test server i uh, don't have the uh, catalyst to break those up the, into higher okay so let's touch on loadout so in terms of loadouts uh it's gonna look a little weird with uh bioelectric surge Right now, because I want this guide series not to be focused on super speed, and I don't want to show super speed specific rotations. Uh, if you're super speed, obviously you just clip in phase dodge. So you do Genesis, wired phase dodge, flux, robot sidekick, and circuit breaker. That would be your super speed rotation. You could also for um, mix in uh, Dervish as well if you want to cancel a bit of extra damage, but it's not absolutely necessary. But uh, if you're not super speed, then obviously the reason why I have bioelectric surge in there is just for the clip. Uh, because flex is 18 seconds. With the accelerated flex mod, it turns into about 16 seconds. While that's okay for the wired buff, because wired buff is 12 seconds, but the weapon buff itself lasts for 20. But the problem is electrogenesis is 12. So if I'm not using accelerated flux, I'm losing 6 seconds of the dot on genesis. And then if I'm using... Um, accelerator flux i'm still losing four seconds on the electrogenesis dot so it's just unnecessary damage loss um so it, you might as well use bioelectric surge to clip that and then flux when it's available just for the extra shield when you're uh, when you're meleeing with uh, two-handed so that's the only reason why that's on there it looks a bit funny but if you're super speed obviously you would use phase dodge that's the only difference 
Uh, the reason why you would not use um, Tesla ball or electrocute in this situation for electric is because for one, we don't have a PI setup. Uh, electric Tesla ball and electrocute both need the electrified PI. If you're running um, Grim, like if you don't want to level an artifact, you can always run electrocute because you have polarized uh, PI setup from the Grim, but uh, Tesla ball won't. And Electrogenesis, the reason why we run this is it's already a hard hitting dot and it requires zero PI setup. So that's why that's good for that one because we don't have anything to set up that pattern action or PI. Okay, so let's touch on the melee rotation. Okay, so you guys get the sense of the melee rotation there. Nothing too fancy. 76, 75, 76. You do get some dips there. That's uh, when you're resetting up the loadout again or the electrogenesis drops for a couple seconds there because the timing's a bit off. Uh, 78, 74. So definitely well into the mid-70s average. Uh, the only reason you would be clipping with flux, the only reason I'm not, and that rotation, see if I do flux, it's going to knock all the ads away. Uh, that's not going to happen in content because... Uh, yeah, you're, it's not strong enough to put the, push that away as a DPS, but the only reason why I'm not using Flux to clip is because uh, I'd have a damage loss from missing damage on that. But ideally you want to use Flux first, and then uh, once the Flux is off cooldown, then use Bioelectric Surge. Now, not only to give yourself a little tiny bit heal, but it's just for a clip. But like I said before, if you didn't watch that point, um, you would 100% use Phase Dodge. The only reason I'm not using Phase Dodge is because I want to show uh, a rotation that would be working for Acrobats and Flights and other users. Uh, so obviously you would use phase dodge or super speed instead of biologic surge. Uh, that should go without saying. But if you don't have that, uh, then that is an option for you because clipping in another power like electrocute or Tesla ball to get another dot is um, not beneficial whatsoever. It's just going to be a damage loss. Okay, let's touch on the next. Okay, so for the electric single target setup, it's going to be the exact same loadout. Uh, once again, uh, if you're just watching this section, in terms of instead of bioelectric surge of your super speed, you use be using phase dodge. Then you'd be using phase dodge for the initial uh, three clip, and then flux after that. But uh, since this is more of a generic guide, uh, this is going to be bioelectric surge is an option you can use there. It's essentially only to clip. Uh, that's the sole purpose of that. It's just to get back into the flare shot animation. So in terms of the spec and everything, the it's going to be the exact same in terms of uh, how you would spec flare shot. So maxing dual wield. I take Explosive Shot as well, just in case there's a boss with ads, and you can switch to Flare Shot um, in a simple rotation. And then you just need, obviously, the Max Bow as well. So that's the only difference there. So let's get into the rotation.
Okay, so you get the gist of the flare shot rotation there. Nothing really changes whatsoever uh, in terms of how you're doing flare shot. Uh, the, po the positive side for me personally is that I am getting better with the flare shot. I, I start doing flare shot more on the EU side because I'm doing a battle trolled um, permanently build there. Uh, so I'm not as useless as I am with flare shot. I'm getting slightly getting better over time. Uh, so 35, 30. Uh, I think that dipped because uh, I was a little bit late refreshing the electrogenesis. 34, 32, 42, 30, uh, 30 again. Uh, so it's in the middle there. Electric single target for um, precision. It's, it's nicer when there's boss and adds as well because obviously electrogenesis dot will spread. You don't have to worry about the PI setup. Normally I would be clipping with flux or, or like I said with phase dodge as well. Uh, but uh, this is more of a generic guide. It's just solely for the clip. That's why it looks weird by Electric Surge, because I would use Phase Dodge and Flux if I had Phase Dodge uh, if you were super speed. But that's what Flourish is going to look like. And that's and considering that's only with 31k prec as a base, I mean, that's not too bad. I think people are sitting way higher than that now on live server in terms of like 34, 35, 36k prec. But not too bad. I'm slightly improving. <laughs> so let's uh, touch on the range here. So in terms of range precision, you're basically dealing with what you have. Uh, there's not too many Weapon Master rotations that are specifically designed for range AOE. Uh, they're any good. Two-handed Air Storm is lackluster compared to dual uh, Explosive Shot, which is the norm, which everyone's been using. You can use Brawling Shuriken Storm and have some success with it. Uh, the only thing is then you're, loving, you're buying another Brawling weapon, but still everyone has a dual because they are flourishing with dual. Uh, so then you might as well switch to Explosive Shot at the same time. Uh, Rotation-wise, nothing changes as well. You're still setting everything up and just doing Explosive Shot. So Explosive Shot can get some nice crits, which is nice. Um, especially on like Spy Drops and stuff like that, Super, like Circuit Breaker, stuff like that. So you know you do have the option to do well, but really it's it's nothing fancy. All you're doing is Explosive Shot. So Flurry Shotting for Single Target, Explosive Shotting for AoE, because with the weapon uh, revamp, nothing really happened that... You know, made any waves with in terms of uh, range precision. So we'll wait to refresh here and then we'll just clip in like a circuit breaker too. So that's that's essentially it. There's you know there's nothing too earth shattering with range and just do an explosive shot that's all it is you can mess around with brawling i wouldn't say brawling works the best with electric it works with some other precision sets uh, especially with like say using like the town uh using that uh, gem of horrors with like gadgets and having the, the turret jump cancel but right now for range precision still the same thing it's going to be dual explosive shot that's why the gem of horrors does not work with uh, explosive shot because you see how slow the weapon uh, combo builds so it'd be absolutely useless so that's why I told you not to level an artifact for the Gem of Horus because it's absolutely useless for range and thus using Brawling. And even Brawling makes it awkward because the combo meter rages so quickly, you're always missing your bleed because one rotation will be put you at 13 uh, hit. So it becomes a little bit awkward to use as Brawling. It's easy enough to miss that bleed setup. So it's just not a deal in artifact, which is what I covered in the uh, artifact section of this guide. Okay, so on the healing side of electric... So in terms of a skill point spec, it's always going to be super powered, critical healing chance, critical healing magnitude, and then putting everything into restoration. And then after that, you've got some choices depending on more of how your play style is and how it impacts you and kind of your experience. So myself, because electric is very, it's an active healing power set, uh, you don't have heal over times to rely on, like say like nature or celestial um, or even water with the, with the pools, with the tranquil pools. So the issue is that you're always using uh, your powers actively because you're basically reactionary healing. So you do go through a lot of power quite quickly as electric. Uh, it turns into more of like a spammy power. So that's why I put at least 100 skill points into might power just to have that extra power pool. But your experience may vary. And then I put the rest into dominance. Dominance will help your healing formula in terms of your heal strength. Uh, and also will go towards your shield strength as well. In terms of iconic powers, if you're running a supercharged build, Pheromone Bloom is nice. It's a 25 percenter and has some nice heals, burst heals. Uh, super speed, once again, you don't need the five skill points in the knockback resistance. I do it because I have enough skill points and I get some power back, uh, which is nice, but it's not necessary. So if you don't have the skill points to warrant the extra five in here, don't worry about it. Um, I run the metabolic boost as my other 25 percenter because it gets me some healing for myself. 
In terms of weapons, once again, it's more of a personal choice. Ideally, you want to have either bow uh, just for flurry shot. Like this is not weapon mastery, just just a bow for regular flurry shotting. Or uh, hand blasters for solar flame. Or pulse beam, but ideally solar flame. Uh, those two have the good power generation and good supercharger generation for uh, healing. But um, I chose to do a, like a, a typical dual wield flurry shot and explosive shot setup uh, because it gives me something a little bit extra to do while I'm, uh, I'm healing. Not that I'm battle healing at all. I'm just it's just something to do. Uh, I can put out a little bit tiny extra damage just because I can afford the skill points, and it's not like it's not unnecessary. I have enough healing, uh, enough supercharge regen through the eye of the Gemini, so I don't need to worry about that. But ultimately, that's up to you in, in terms of your weapon choice. It's not going to be like a night and day difference uh, mattering at all. So in terms of the gear, uh, once again, depending on what your weapon choice is, you're always going to have replenishing adapter in the weapon mod. That is for restoring power. Your head mod depends what you run. A pheromone bloom uh, for the 25% or if you're running a group strength reducer for the 100% shoot, uh, supercharged shield, then run that in the head mod. Neck mod's always going to be for uh, focus restoration. Back mod's going to be always accelerated bio cap as electric. Uh, chest mod, I use power efficiency once again because it's a reactionary power healing. Leg mod, don't worry about it. Leg mod doesn't matter at all. In terms of your hand mod, max damage. Once again, there's not really any other options that are viable. And the feet mod, I use tumbling mastery just for the extra bit of roll distance. In terms of artifacts, ideally it's up to you as well. I use a creepy jack because it, it boosts my restoration as well. It's going to heal myself if my health drops over 40%. Uh, so it's just a little extra added bonus. Uh, I personally, I've kind of been swapping between using the healer trinket uh, if you want some restoration. I find um, using the central city trinket shield and basically when you uh, activate the central city trinket, the second activation, which is the hold. So this, as a healer, this becomes an eight-man shield. So you're going to put a shield on the entire group with the shield. It's not like a, a super powerful shield at all. I don't want to give you that impression, but uh, it does prevent a little bit of damage and it's just something to do. Because I feel like the restoration trinket doesn't always benefit me. Like it's just basically I'd just be using it for a clip, um, because I'm not using some great heal over time supercharge or anything like that. Or even if I'm using group transducer, it's not going to really matter that much. It's it's going to add some extra strength to it, but that's really about it. So you can certainly run the healing trinket. I just find more usefulness out of running the central city one. But that's your preference, and then obviously orbital and supply. So in terms of artifacts, uh, this is where it's going to be depending on what you want as a healer build. And what I mean by that is basically there's two ways to play a healers nowadays. Uh, you can still run a uh, regular pure healing power set. And if you're running pure healing, then you'd run like Page of Destiny, which is the new one, which is very good. Uh, sure. You can run Orb of Orion. And then as your third one, you could run the Transformation, the Strategist, uh, still Gemini, Soul Cloak, stuff like that. Uh, we'll just keep it with the Strategist. So if you want like a pure healing setup, you can run this. You can store on Demon Fang. I personally don't like Demon Fang because Demon Fang is just for the stats. You're only using it for the base restoration. The damage on it is terrible. The power return on it is not that good at all compared to other things. So there's really no sense to run Demon Fang in that case. Um, so I'm personally not going to worry about it. The strategist is nice. Uh, I'm really liking that as electric because it adds that heal over time ability. So even without running the transformation card, because I don't believe the transformation card uh, warrants the crit chances for electric, I'm seeing a much better benefit because Galvanize, even without crits, gal you're going to get a crit on Galvanize and you're using Galvanize, you know, very frequently. So you have a chance to always apply that heal over time. So it turns Galvanize into a heal over time, essentially, with the strategist card, uh, which is what I like. Uh, the Page of Destiny, you don't necessarily need that as Electra because you've got bio cap. So basically, Page of Destiny is a mini bio cap. Um, except it's uh, below 44% instead of 45%, and that bio cap works for seven targets and yourself, so technically eight. And then the group heal, the page of destiny at 200 is going to be for six, uh, where normally it would be four. So page of destiny is still a really good pure healing artifact. Uh, it's just that it's not as necessary for electric because you already have bio cap. So it's nice to have both, obviously, but um, you can run better things. Orbital Ryron is also a very he good pure healing artifact. It's good at 120. Uh, so you don't even need to get this necessarily 200, but um, uh, same thing. It just turns your priority cost. So if I'm using it now, if I go back to my priority cost here, which is Bioelectric Surge. Uh, oh, because it's rank zero. That's why. So 
normally, if you're if you're uh, wasn't rank zero, if it was like rank eighty, uh, rank twenty or whatever it is, uh, then your priority heal is going to cost extra three hundred percent. So it usually turns into about sixteen thousand uh, power costs. So if you've seen other videos of mine or even the previous um, artifact videos of mine, you'll, you'll understand what I mean. But most people know about the orb by now. But uh, yeah, it's it's really nice. It turns bio cap. Or, sorry, a bioelectric surge into a much stronger heal, but then you have to offset that power cost, which is why I take the extra power. So in my setup, I run a different art build. So in my artifact build, I run the Eye of the Gemini, Soul Cloak, and the Strategist card. And, and I do that because I'm using two supercharges. So what I mean by, he I'm not healing the group more. It's just that I can heal the group uh, sufficiently fine enough, especially if you're running two heals. If you're running elite and two heals, and you don't need uh, overkill of like five abilities to heal. Now, I've got my you know, priority covered. I've got my heal over time covered, and my pet heal and galvanize. I've got bio cap as my emergency, and then I got flux to shield people. So I'm already fine for that. But in this case, uh, in this case, I can keep using a supercharge. So I'm but I'm not only buffing myself, so I'm getting the extra five percent resto because I have the Gemini at 200. So I'm getting the extra 5% resto stats for this, so increasing my dominance, health, and restoration. But I'm also giving the entire group supercharge. And running 225s, you can pretty much do this consistently. So most people do this with bug form healing and swap out a bug form and, and do either Gemini, but you can do it almost the same effectiveness as using 225s. So like I'm still healing, you know, everything, still hitting, clipping the shield every single time. But in between that, my heals. I can pop another supercharge, so it's already up. Same thing. Let's go back into regular healing the group. Getting off cooldown. It's ready again. So I'm doing, and you can see my supercharge bar is not moving. Uh, because I have Gemini and Soul Cloak at 200, I can keep doing this all day and not have my supercharge worry about all. I'm not. I'm never going to run out of supercharge alternating between the 225s with, along with having the head mod and the pheromone bloom. So I can keep doing this the entire time and not have to worry about that while providing A, stat buffs for the tank. Uh, if the tank has Gemini as well, he'll get that 5% dominance from my green circle from the caster's watch. Uh, and then I'm also buffing myself. So I'm getting extra bonus stats. I'm helping the group give supercharge and I'm doing healing at the same time. So that's what I choose to heal as electric. Uh, that's, you know, experience might differ. That's not a pure healing build. That's just basically a, a buff build. So if I was using uh, a pure build, then I'd run like group transducer, and then I would rec recover. I'd put flux here, bio cap, uh, take recover for the uh, four, or I'd recover disappear to, there it is. So if you want a pure healing build, then you'd run this. So you wouldn't run, then you'd run those artifacts that I talked about before. You'd run like Page of Destiny, you'd run Orb, Strategist if you want. So this is a more a pure healing setup for Electric. So I've got my Priority, I've got my Group Heal, I've got uh, Galvanize, which would be my um, Burst Heal as well as my Pet Heal, Pet Healing Ability or NPC Healing Ability. I've got Biocat for my Emergency Rescue Heals, I've got Flux as a Shield, and Group Transducer for my 100% Supercharge. So that's a more typical rotation and loadout you'll see with electric. Uh, that's what's more common, but uh, I just at this point I feel that some groups take uh, two two healers. If I'm if your group's running two healers, this is overkill. You don't need this and a second healer powering supercharge. Uh, where it'd be more helpful to your group to spam supercharge, where you know the DPS get their supercharge back faster, the other healer does, you know the tank does. So it's, it's just I find it more beneficial running the 225s. But once again, your experience might differ. It just depends what you want to do with with your healing. If you want to be a pure healer or if you want to be a buff healer, that's that's what it comes down to. Those are the two types of ways to play healing.